Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Inside the Zone for Monday, March 9th. Once again, joined by the Comets beat writer out at the New Sentinel, Blake Sebring. Your Randy Blake. Spieth, you did such a great job last week. We booted that old fart and brought in you for good. I now. know. It's time to update the resume, I That's think, right. for me. That's right. There you go. Hey, it's uh, feeling like spring outside, and I'm guessing a little bit of uh, spring-like conditions up in Kalamazoo this week. You know, <laughs> the Comets scheduled to play a little home-and-home. Home. Got the game in Friday night, played great, 3-0 shutout, but Saturday... Poor ice conditions I'm um, hearing so far. Do you have any yeah, more details they, on they that? They tried to do a promotion with a, some kind of a polar plunge into a pool while the pool leaked and the chemicals melted the ice. You know, I give the Wings credit for trying different things. You know, I mean, they're always trying something. you got to give them credit for that. Yeah, and, of course, uh, that means the game will now be made up on Wednesday. Busy week ahead, you know, four games, five nights. Really a lot of the line, too, you know, they're facing the uh, – Cyclones on, no, excuse me, the walleye on Friday night. Yeah, and then the Cyclones. That'll be good. Yeah, and then the Cyclones. So, you know, uh, Kalamazoo, of course, coming on recently. I mean, yeah. what, do you, what are you looking forward to this week with four games on the schedule? I want to see, uh, like we said last week, I want to see how the defense does. Uh, Michael Tam is going to try to come back probably over the weekend. And I want to see how they do because we've got some news about Roman Will that, um, you know, we don't know anything specific yet. We know he's got a lower body injury, and we know they're doing an MRI, which the results will be read tomorrow. But the fact that they're doing an MRI means it's probably a little bit more serious than, than, uh, than just day-to-day, -day, okay? I mean, I don't think it's season-ending or anything like that, but I think they're, being gonna, they're gonna be extra careful. They know this kid has a future, too, and they don't wanna risk his health for that. But I got a feeling, too, that if it was playoffs, he'd probably be playing. You know, so it's one of those. Yeah, he was, you know, in between the pipes on Friday night, got his first professional shutout. You know, really played really well because the Comets didn't score themselves until third period. Um, looking at the goaltender situation, I mean, with Will and, um, you know, maybe Pat Nagel, I'm not sure how no, that will be. Pat's not going to be back for a while. He won't probably. be back. Well, I was listening for the playoffs-wise. Right. I mean, do you think these two guys will be able to anchor the team pretty well, you know, come oh, yeah. postseason? Yeah, I, I do. I think so, without a doubt. Uh, he really, the one to watch now is Ryan Miller in Vancouver. How quickly does he come back? Because that, that'll trickle down to Utica with Pat Nagel then coming back to the Comets. But it wouldn't shock me if the Comets went out and looked for a trade in the next few days before the trade deadline on, I believe it's Monday. And, uh, you know, they've got some extra bodies right this second, and maybe they'll go for a goalie, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, this is going to be a key week to make sure they have someone uh, playing strong back there. Also, um, some other... Players returning, as we know, we see a goaltender probably hitting the uh, shelf for a little bit. Of course, uh, Michael Tame, we just mentioned, but only played in two games so far this year. And yeah, he's – Fort Wayne fans only saw him for one game. I mean, yeah. he was the, the first game in Indy in that game. And, and truthfully, I thought he was one of the best players on the ice in Indy and Fort Wayne that night. And then even the Fort Wayne game, he was hurt. So, I mean, he's going to be really fun to watch. I mean, I have told Glenn before, you cannot make a trade at this time of the year and get better – anything better back than Michael Tam. I mean – not to put a bunch of pressure on Michael, but he's better than anything you could get, and you didn't have to give anything up to get him. You know, he's really going to be a difference maker. Yeah, and then the other two guys have um, been playing great all year, you know, Who? playing up Norfolk. We got Mike Inbach oh. and Sean Sidlowski. Just what are you expecting from them? I um, expect you know, Aaron Clark to be really, really happy yeah. that they're back yeah. and his buds are back, and I guess I would assume that they're going to set those guys up as a line again. I mean, they were so successful last year in the playoffs, and, uh, and that just – makes everything else better because you've got that line back and it, you can push down the other lines a little bit and everybody's better then. There's more depth and there's more offensive opportunity there too. Well, you just talked to us a little bit about the trade deadline. How does it work in the ECHL in the sense of like what are the Comets trying to do to kind of, you know, is it more moves to stop other teams from getting better or is it stuff that really kind of positions themselves better for, you know, late April? I think it's, it's right now, I don't think they need it for late April. I think right now it's to get through to April. Um, maybe, I, don't, I mean, they're going to be loaded on defense. Um, they're going to be, I, I think what could be interesting is if they, maybe they look at a goalie, depending on how Roman Will's MRI comes out. Um, maybe they, they, they look at it this way. Maybe they know there's some guys who are not going to be on the playoff roster, and there are four or five, just because the numbers are too many. And maybe you trade them to other teams for future considerations for next year to set yourself up then. That way, the player would be happy because he's not going to be on the playoff roster necessarily. And then he goes somewhere where he can play, you know, and maybe make an impression for next year for them too, for, the, for his new team. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, 
The Comets also still continue to play great still. First place, I think it's the most points in their conference. I think 83 is the most, you know, on the western side. They're right there with, yeah, with Redding. And, yep. uh, well, Toledo's, Toledo lost yesterday, Sunday, so that helped them a lot. Mm -hmm. um, really, Friday night's game is going to be big. Right, yeah, because, you know, they've 17 games now, you know, since that one kind of that we were thinking would happen didn't take place. This seems like maybe the biggest week of the year. Just looking down the stretch with about five weeks to go, I mean, four games do really well, things pretty much are, you know, kind of set, but not so hot, you know, that's going to probably be uh, something not good. And it's a lot of travel, too. I mean, after Wednesday, they come home, then head south, head back. Just what all do you kind of expect this week? Four games over five nights with a few hundred miles on the, the You know what, too. I expect this is where their depth will really show through. With getting Sidlowski and Embach and possibly, probably Tam, you know, they're going to be really solid, I think. I, I really expect them to show... Maybe they'll they won't play some guys every game. You know, maybe you look at, uh, at at resting certain guys or doing some situational uh, substitutions in the lineup. You know, depending on who's fresh. And uh, you you've got right now you've got two healthy uh, defensemen sitting out, and you're going to have a probably another. You know, when Tam comes back, there's no reason if if somebody gets the slightest nick now. Uh, Hey, why don't you take a game off? You know, I mean, we've got these guys who are itching to play and they're ready to go, and you could do that too. You know, I mean, it'll be interesting that way. I guess one thing we haven't mentioned yet, quickly, just uh, Tam and Sidlowski. Are we all expecting Wednesday, or is it going to be a different timetable for everybody? Well, it's going to be a different timetable. I think Sidlowski and Mbach will play Wednesday, and then I don't. I don't think you want to send Michael Tam with a bum shoulder or a, a, a healing shoulder up to Kalamazoo in that little band box where he's going to get hit on every shift. Um, and I expect him maybe to play Friday or Saturday and maybe Sunday, you know. I don't know that he'll play all three, but I would think he'll play two. And then if he gets through those two, okay, he'll play every game, you know, from there on out to get him into, into playoff conditioning and that kind of thing. No, but, like, that's all I really have because, you know, just one game this past week, not a, not a whole lot really happening, at least on the ice. I don't know what else you Well, noticed. I mean, this was a, a week where the Comets lost uh, the legend Terry Pembroke. Mm -hmm. And uh, Terry was beloved in Fort Wayne. He was one of the four, as I like to think of him, as the four cornerstones of the franchise, one of the first four guys to get his number retired, along with Robbie Irons, Len Thornton, and Eddie Long. And uh, he was 70, and, and, and he was the, really the, one of the few guys who had their numbers retired who wasn't living in Fort Wayne anymore. Mm -hmm. But he always was back here. I mean, he must have talked to people three, four times a week in Fort Wayne by phone. And... And he was definitely part of Fort Wayne. He was a big part of the Comets, and he's really going to be missed. Yeah, he's probably one of the big reasons, you know, the Comets are so popular here in Northeast Indiana today. Yeah. Yep. Well, thank you, Blake. That does it for this week's edition of Inside the Zone. I'm not going to make a promise that Glenn will be back next week. I don't want him back now. Yeah. Come on. I don't want to be wrong either. So <laughs> thank you very much, and we'll see you guys here next week.